Folks, welcome back to the garage. I'm out here today with my brand new 2019 Tesla Model 3. And if you're a fan of the channel, you know that I live in Texas, where the state requires us to defile the front end of our cars with a front license plate. Now, Tesla offers us this thing to install a front license plate in states where it's required that sticks on with this double-sided tape, kind of like a GoPro mount. But I refuse to put this on my brand new car because it's pretty much going to be permanent. I have a feeling that if I tried to remove this ever, it would take the paint off the bumper with it. So I needed a, a different non-permanent solution. And based on the recommendations of the local Tesla owners group, what I came up with is 1975 Creations, the Bandit license plate bracket. So I've not yet seen one of these things in person. So let's go ahead and get it out of the box and have a look before we install it on the car. All right, unboxing the Bandit. This is sold by 1975 Creations, which you can see the, their website address right here, and you order it straight from there. Uh, and it, it arrives pretty fast, actually. I, I think I ordered this on a Wednesday, and it arrived Saturday, I believe. Today is Saturday, and it was in today's mail. So, let's get it open here, see what we've got inside. 1975 Creations charges you $120 for this fine piece of engineering. And so first what we've got is an, a, a little Ziploc bag full of hardware. We've got four, looks like maybe the uh, fasteners that hold the plate on. And we've got two stainless maybe uh, fasteners with a hex socket end. Let's see. And then we've got the bracket, which I'm shocked to discover is actually all one piece. Okay. And uh, some instructions. Okay, so what do we have here? We've got the bracket itself, which comes pre-assembled, actually. And uh, it's, it's much more elaborate than I thought it would be. I figured this would be just, like, plain with no fancy engraving on it. But this is actually far more skookum than I had imagined it would be. Uh, anyway, it looks like it attaches using this mechanism. So we've got these two fasteners that appear to be permanently installed, and then we thread those other two we saw in the bag through here and thread them into these holes. There's not really any assembly to do here, so I guess we can now go ahead and get on with installing it on the car. All right, here we are at the front of the car. And so the instructions say to take the, the bracket and we fish these through the second row in the grill down. Uh, with this vertical rib being the center, we want one on each side. So, go ahead and fish them through there. Like that. And I think, okay. So there's one side, and there the, there's the other. Okay. So we get it in there like that. And then the instructions say to use the other quarter 20 bolts, the, uh, the big long stainless steel ones, these. And we want to make sure that we get the lock washers and the regular washers on there. So we get our lock washer, put it on there like that. And our regular washer, we put it on there like that. We make sure we also have the one for the other side. These came shipped on there, but this side fell off when I took it out of the bag. So they should already be assembled and ready to go. And I have a feeling we're also going to need this Allen wrench that's included. This guy. Set our bolts aside there. And now, we fish the bolt through the bottom hole. And thread it into the hole in the little plate until it catches. And we do the other side. Come on, go in there. Now with those secured, in the, or the thread started, go ahead and tighten this down. The instructions say be careful not to over tighten. So once we get our bolts started, we just screw them down, and the instructions say to tighten them until the lock washers are compressed. So that one should be about there. Okay, we're way off center here. One of the things you're going to want to be careful with is there's plenty of play this way, left to right, 
in the positioning of this thing. So you want to make sure that you get it centered or something tells me it'll drive me crazy. So we'll back that one off, back this guy off just a little bit. Let's say right about there. So we'll once again tighten this side down and then this side down. Now we'll go ahead and do the top. The top ones have those little collars to keep you from backing the uh, bolt out and losing the uh, retaining plates. So there we go, there's one more. Finally the last one. Okay, once you've got them all tightened, I recommend going in kind of a cross pattern here, making sure that they are in fact all still tight. You really wouldn't want this to come off while you're driving, so be careful of it. And there we go. It's now secured to this plastic grill. I can't claim to be a huge fan of securing the license plate, which sticks way out and uh, like this to this plastic grill, but uh, what are you going to do? All right, our last step of installation here is to install the plate itself on the bracket. And for that, the bracket comes with these handy dandy screws, which are a Phillips head. So we'll take our license plate and get the first screw started. And these screws are self-tapping, so be careful not to strip them. There's one, two, three, and four. There we go. I guess that's secure. All right, well, there we go. In terms of in difficulty of installation, this is, this is a one out of 10. There's two fasteners that are required to install the bracket itself and then four more for the plate, which you'd, you'd be doing that anyway. So they get high marks for making it easy to install. I would say this is maybe a three out of five in terms of how sturdy it is. You can see I can wiggle this a little bit with my hand and it's secured to this plastic grill in here and not anything structural. Now, I should point out that that's, that's probably the best that 1975 could do, given that there isn't anywhere else to attach it to without drilling holes in the bumper, and we all know how most of us feel about that. One of their key claims is that it should be compatible with Homelink and Autopilot. Now, my car doesn't have Homelink because I don't have a Homelink garage door opener, but we should probably go and test the claim that Autopilot works, because that's one of the key selling points of the car, and you obviously don't want to lose that. So, I've got this installed. Let's go for a drive. Okay, here we are in the car, and we can see that in the picture here, we've got the autopilot sensors detecting vehicles off in the distance, uh, but we don't have any sort of proximity warning, which we would get if something were standing in front of the car. So the claim that it doesn't interfere, at least with the park sensors, seems to be true, and it, it shouldn't get in the way of any of the cameras that are, are used with the autopilot system. So that's looking good. Now what we need to test is, will the computer actually allow us to engage the autopilot with that installed? And I have no reason currently to believe that it shouldn't, but let's just go for a drive and see. Oh, there goes another Model 3. Man, he's booking it. All right, so let's get ourselves up to speed here. So, autopilot engaged, and we're looking good. Autopilot seems to be working. I can take my hands off the wheel, and it keeps going. All right, so we're gonna call this a win, and we'll head back to the garage and wrap this up. All right, folks, that was Saturday. It's now Saturday again, and I've had the bracket on the car for about a week, so what do I think of it? First, I like that it's very well made out of very high quality materials that have been CNC machined and designed with clearly a great deal of care. It has stainless hardware throughout, so it's not gonna rust and leave gnarly stains on your paint. And personally, I think it looks okay on the car. And I like that it requires no drilling to install, and it's made by an enthusiast member of the community, which is something that every car enthusiast community needs, is people who care enough to make parts and keep the community running. What don't I like? First of all, 
it's kind of pricey at $129. I know I said $120 earlier and that was a mistake. It's $129 shipped in my house. Considering that that includes shipping, it's not totally unreasonable, but it is just a lot to spend. So keep that in mind. I don't think it was particularly unreasonable to charge that much, just that you're spending $130 almost on a license plate bracket. Also, it's kind of heavy. Uh, I weighed mine at one pound 11 ounces or 770 grams with the plate installed. And that's a lot of weight to have dangling off of that plastic grill in the front of the car. And as you can see here, it wiggles a little bit as a result of that. I don't think it's really a problem. I think there's probably a lot of things on the car that would break before this does, or even the plastic grill, but it is just something to keep in mind. I think they could have made this lighter. And if I were going to offer any suggestions to the 1975 creations, it would be See if you can make it lighter in future iterations. And finally, two things that I'm splitting hairs here, but one is other products on the market, such as Stow and Show, offer toolless removal of the plate so you can wash and wax behind it, and this doesn't. It's a little bit of a pain in the neck to get it off and put it back on, and that's just something to keep in mind if one of the reasons you want this is so that you can easily remove it. And finally, they used inch standard fasteners to install this on the car and I assume throughout the rest of the bracket. And that means that while the rest of the car is metric, you need this one oddball 530 seconds Allen wrench, which they're good enough to include, to install it on the car and remove it. And if you only have tools for working on your Tesla, you're going to need that one oddball inch standard size to deal with this bracket. And there would there's a more elegant way of dealing with that and I wish they had done that. Anyway, I think I'm satisfied with this, although for the sake of YouTubing, I may review some other brackets. And if there's a particular one you'd like to see, leave a comment below and I'll, uh, I'll look at maybe doing a review of that one. Anyway, if you're considering this bracket, I hope this helped you out. And as always, I will see you in the next one.